By 1900, there were about 20,000 black-owned businesses. Booker T. Washington starts the National Negro Business League, which becomes this incredible network of entrepreneurs across the country who meet for conventions, support one another, and show each other that they can make it in this capitalist society. By 1900, there were about 20,000 black-owned businesses in the United States. They were anchors of black communities in the North and the South, including Memphis, Tennessee. Blacks were truly on their way to becoming first-class citizens and living a good life in Memphis. Thomas Moss is emblematic of that. He owned a store called the People's Grocery. It was a co-op, co-owned by at least 10 African-American citizens in Memphis. And this was part of the entrepreneurial spirit that was going on in the city. The People's Grocery was considered a threat to the white community because there was already a grocery store in the area that was owned by a white person. That owner was William Barrett. In March of 1892, Having grown fearful and jealous of the people's grocery success, Barrett instigated a mob attack on his competition. Men came in the middle of the night. There was gunfire. And as a result, there's lots of arrests, uh, including men at the people's grocery. Tommy Moss was dragged out of the jail and taken about a mile north. He was tortured and shot. The killer's true motivation was exposed in a stinging column by local journalist and publisher Ida B. Wells, who was a close friend of Thomas Moss. This is what opened my eyes to what lynching really was, an excuse to get rid of Negroes who were acquiring wealth and property and thus keep the race terrorized. A rash of lynchings was sweeping the country, 161 in 1892 alone. After the murder of Thomas Moss, Ida B. Wells dedicated herself to exposing the truth. The rationale was always written up in the press, in the white press, as that, that blacks were now suddenly, and out of seemingly nowhere, beginning to rape white women. Because this was the only rationale that people could accept. Wells launched a national investigation and found that lynching was typically motivated by white resentment of black economic competition. When she published her findings, Wells' life came under threat. A mob comes and destroys her newspaper office entirely. People are waiting for her to come back to lynch her. And so she decides not to come back to Memphis. In fact, won't be back for decades. In 1893, a year after she fled Memphis, Ida B. Wells delivered a blistering speech at the Chicago World's Fair. Before a packed house, she condemned racism in the mainstream press. The men who encourage or lead the mobs which do the lynchings belong to the race which own the telegraph wires newspapers, and all the other communication with the outside world. They write the reports which justify lynching, and those reports are accepted by the world without question or investigation. 